to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 19, it is said of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that He was a friend of tax collectors and a friend of sinners. We welcome you today to our study of more about Jesus, especially today. We're thinking about the beautiful idea of Jesus as a friend of sinners. There's no doubt the Jews meant that as a derogatory statement, but how true it is, nobody could be a greater friend to someone in sin than the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so today we're going to be thinking about the idea of how Jesus really is a friend of sinners. We hope that you've got your Bible. If you don't have that, we want to encourage you to locate your Bible, have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God in our study of this beautiful idea. Today's lesson, of course, is being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ and individual congregations. And friend, the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. They'd love to have you as their assembly on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night. Whenever they meet, you would be an honored guest there. You'll find people there who love God, who are concerned about uh, souls and who want more than anything for all men everywhere to be united on the truth of God's Word and to go to heaven. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to learn more about salvation, more about the church or worship or whatever it may be, you'll find people there who'd be happy to study the Word of God with you. We'd also like to help you in your journey to know God's Word better here at The Gospel of Christ. Won't you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our study material free of charge. We've got lessons on every book of the Old and New Testament and a wide variety of topical studies to go along with that as well. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our past lessons, you can go to our website, fill out a media request form, and we'll send that to you free of charge. You can get a digital download, or we'll send you a CD for the audio copy or a DVD for the video as well. And while you're there, be sure to check out all our written material, study questions, good library of Bible study material. And as always, we encourage you for your smartphone to download the Gospel of Christ app, available both on Android and the Apple Store as well. As we think today about Jesus as a friend of sinners, we're talking about friendship in the grand idea of someone doing what's best for someone else. No man, uh, Jesus is the greatest friend and that he laid down his life. For others, John chapter 15, verses 13 and 14. But this picture is seen so beautifully in Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. Here you have Jesus dining at the house of Matthew, the tax collector, Levi, the tax collector there. And the Pharisees are kind of offended because he's rubbing elbows with the tax collectors and the sinners. And so they say, how can he be, in essence, the master teacher if he's rubbing elbows with these people? People. And Jesus will say, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And thus in Matthew eleven nineteen, 19, it will be said, Jesus is a friend of tax collectors and sinners. You know, this text tells us a great deal about the character of our Lord toward those in sin. And if this text is applied correctly, it should teach us what our relationship toward the lost should be like. It's little wonder after we view the friendliness, the nature, the ability of, of Jesus to reach people on all different socio and economical levels, it's no wonder when Jesus preached, people listened very carefully. Mark 12 verse 37 says, the common people 
heard him gladly. And so as we think about Jesus as a friend of sinners today, we want to answer three basic questions about Jesus as a friend of sinners. Number one, we're going to ask and answer from the scripture, why? Is Jesus a friend of sinners? Secondly, we're going to ask and answer from the Bible, how did Jesus show his friendship to sinners? And then thirdly, what can we learn from that so that we can reach those who are lost in sin better? Let's begin with the first. Why was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, a friend of sinners? Well, just simply to put it bluntly, if Jesus had not been a friend of sinners, he would have been friendless. What do you mean by that? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse number, number 23. There is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3, verse 10. All the way back to the book of 1 Kings chapter 8, verse number 46, in a kind of a parenthetical statement, even under the Old Testament we learn, there's none righteous. All have sinned. Ecclesiastes 7, verses 20 through 29, uh, there's not a righteous man on the face of the earth who does good and does not sin. And so Jesus was a friend of sinners or he wouldn't be able to associate with anybody. All have sinned, even his disciples, even those in his inner circle, they had sinned as well. And so Jesus came to help those who are lost in sin. Uh, I, I think of Matthew 1, verses 19 through 21. You'll call his name Jesus, Emmanuel, which is translated God with us, and he'll save his people from their sins. You see, I needed to know Jesus here to help sinners, and so did you, because we're all at one point sinners. Ezekiel 18.4 says, that's a bad place to be. The soul who sins will surely die. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 tells us that because we're all sinners, Sin separates us from God. The Bible says, The Lord's ears not heavy, they cannot hear. His arms not shortened, that he cannot say. But your sins and your iniquities have separated you from your God. God, as described in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, is of pure eyes, then behold iniquity, and cannot look upon wickedness. And so, from the outset, Jesus had to be a friend of sinners, or he would have been friendless. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Secondly, when we ask the question, why was Jesus a friend of sinners? Friend, here is such a, a, a graphic illustration of Jesus' love and His friendliness. Jesus was a friend of sinners because of His great love for the lost. How could Jesus not be a friend of sinners and exhibit the type of love that he had. You remember John 3, 16? Everybody's familiar with this verse. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The very reason Jesus came was because he loved people. God loved the lost, and Jesus loved them. Think about this graphic picture of the sacrifice and the love of Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 5, verses 6 through 8, While we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone might even dare to die. But listen to this. God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When we were lost, when we were in the depths of despair, God's love, Christ's love intervened for those in sin. And thus John would say, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we can be called children of God. It's the love of Christ that motivates us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And listen to this. He died for all that they who live should no longer live for themselves, but live for Him who died for them and rose again. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 and 15. Probably one of the most beautiful pictures of what Jesus did in expressing His love and His friendship toward man is seen in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. Paul says, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that we, through his poverty, might be made rich. And so Jesus was a friend of sinners because if he wasn't, he'd have been friendless. And because he wanted to show his great love for the lost. And then we mention this idea. Jesus was a friend of sinners because they're the very ones Jesus came to heal. You remember when the Pharisees again in Mark chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 11 began to complain because Jesus was uh, rubbing elbows with the uh, tax collectors and the sinners and, and not sitting around hobnobbing with the uh, religious elite of his day. And so th they said that kind of as a derogatory statement. He's a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But you know, I think of Jesus' response to that in Mark 2 verse 17. The righteous, Jesus said, those who are well have no need of a doctor or physician. Those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You think about the everyday logic and the common sense of that. You wake up in the morning, you feel great, everything's good. You don't, first thing you do, you don't say to yourself, man, I feel great today. I think I'll call the, doc, call the doctor and go see him. Well, of course not. Those who are well don't need a physician those who are sick. Jesus is a friend of sinners because He came to heal those who are sick in sin and lost. Luke 19 verse 10, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Remember it is it's sin that brings about spiritual death. The soul who sins shall surely die. And friend, as we think about, about sin, I want you to think about how it is likened unto a sickness. In the scripture, sin is likened unto a disease. 2 Timothy 2 verse 17, some had something like gangrene or a, a cancer and that cancer that was going to eat away at them was false teaching that was going to cause people to be lost in sin. And friend, that's us. And you, when you've done all those things commanded, you say, I'm an unprofitable servant. I've only done that which was my duty to do, Luke 17, 10. I could not get there on my own. There's a way that seems right to a man, in thereof is the way of death. All our righteousness is like a filthy rag, Isaiah said, and Isaiah 6, or Isaiah 64, verse number 6. And so, sin's the sickness, sin's the disease. Sin is what uh, makes man look bad and, and it destroys him spiritually. Jesus is the great physician. Mark chapter 1 verse 40. Uh, Mark 7 verse 37, they said of Jesus, He's done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Jesus, the great physician, has the cure to the sin problem. He is the cure. Acts 4 verse 12, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. When they pierced the side of Jesus in John 19, blood and water came forth and it's that blood that cleanses us from sin. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf. And so Jesus is a friend of sinners because as the great physician, those are the people who are sick in sin that he came to heal and thank God that he did. Why else, did Jesus, why else is Jesus a friend of sinners? Jesus is a friend of sinners because he can teach them how to overcome a life of sin. You see, we're not talking about someone who can't relate to, someone who can't be tempted by it, someone who doesn't know what temptation and snares of the devil look like. Listen to the sympathizing Savior. It is said in Hebrews 4.15, We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. What do you mean? He was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. Jesus, as the master teacher, He's been tempted in every way possible. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, Satan threw everything he had at him in the wilderness. Jesus overcame that. What does that teach me? Jesus, He's a friend of sinners because He can teach me. Because He's done it, 
He can teach me how to overcome a life of sin. He teaches me how sin works and how Satan works. 1 John 2, verse 15 through 17, Do not love the world or all that is in the world. Lust flesh, lust the eyes, and the pride of life. He teaches me how Satan is going to try to assail me. He teaches me what's most important. Matthew 16, 23, Mark 8, verse 36 and 37, What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? and loses his own soul. My soul is of extreme value to God, the most important thing. And he teaches me that I can win the battle. Ephesians 5 verse 11, the Bible teaches us that we can overcome the wicked one. Revelation chapter 12 verses 11 as well. And so uh, when we think about Jesus as a friend of sinners, thank God that He came to this earth. Thank God that He didn't run around like the Pharisees and the religious elite and the scribes of His day wanting Him to, uh, rubbing elbows with them, only being around the religious elite, running in their circles and, and never getting down where the people were. Aren't you glad Jesus was a friend of sinners? No, no greater love than a friend can have than to lay down his life for sinners. And that's exactly what Jesus did. John chapter 15, verses 13 and 14. Now, with this idea, though, if we're not careful when we say Jesus is a friend of sinners, sometimes people get the wrong impression that Jesus kind of went along and thought all that sin was okay. And friend, that's not the idea. How did Jesus show His friendship to sinners. I want you to consider, first of all, some ways that Jesus did not show His friendship to sinners that some people maybe think that we should. Jesus did not show His friendship to sinners by tolerating sin. John chapter 4. Uh, there is the woman at the well that Jesus discusses uh, scriptural proper worship with. She's got a question about worship. Jesus addresses that question, answers it, but then Jesus tells her something about her life. You'd have five husbands. The one you have right now is not your husband. John chapter 8, Jesus tells the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Jesus didn't condone. That woman living in sin in John 4. He didn't condone the woman in adultery in John chapter 8. In fact, his words were clear. You're not right. Go sin no more. He loved them. He told them that out of love. But friend, when we talk about Jesus as a friend of sinners, we're not saying he tolerated it and acted like it was okay. Jesus didn't show his friend to sinners by not ever offending anybody. You know, we live in a world today that People get offended and their feelings hurt so easy. And yet sometimes to say what's right, that may happen. And Jesus wasn't the type who was such a friend that he would never offend anybody. In fact, Mark chapter 12, verse 24, Jesus said to the Sadducees who were way off in their doctrine, you do therefore greatly err. You don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. I wonder if that hurt anybody's feelings. You know, Jesus wasn't concerned about, so concerned about hurting anybody's feelings that he wouldn't speak the truth. John chapter 6, Jesus made some difficult statements. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. He was talking about bringing his whole person into their life. And John 6 verse 66 through 68 says, Some of Jesus' disciples walked with him no more. Did Jesus grovel to them and apologize and say, Oh, did it hurt your feelings and I'm sorry? No, Jesus turned to the rest and He said, You want to go away also? If that's what you want, you can do that. He gave them reason not to. It wasn't what Jesus wanted. But Jesus wasn't a, a friend who had never hurt anybody's feelings. That's not real friendship to begin with. And then thirdly, Jesus didn't have just the good old neighbor mentality. I won't ever say anything, won't ever bring anything up, won't ever talk. As long as we can be good neighbors and get along, I'll never bring anything up that might be controversial. Mark 12, verse 31, Jesus was a real, he really loved his neighbor. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If I don't want to be lost and if I were going down the wrong path, somebody told me, I'd, I'd appreciate that, right? Well, friend, that's the way our Lord and Savior was as well. How then did Jesus show his love to sinners? Ultimately, Jesus showed his love to sinners by his sacrificial death on the cross. No greater love has anyone than to lay down his life for his friends. 
you're my friends, Jesus said, if you do whatever I command you. In essence, Jesus of saying, I've shown you how great a friend I am. I'm going to by laying down my life to respond to that properly. You need to obey me, John 15, 13, and 14. And so the, the, the example of Jesus' friendship is His ultimate sacrifice on the cross. 1 Peter 2, 24, He Himself bore our sins in His own body upon the tree. The Bible clearly teaches. John 1, 29, uh, John saw Jesus approaching. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. By His stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, verse number 4. We're not redeemed from corruptible things uh, like silver or gold from our aimless conduct, but with the precious blood of Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. And yet Jesus shed His blood once for all time and for all people. Jesus also shows His love to, to sinners by teaching them the truth on how to be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. You see, Jesus realized the value of truth. John 8 verse 32, You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Do not be ignorant, but understand the will of the Lord. Ephesians 5, verse number 17. In a day and age where people don't like to hear about truth and definite and right and wrong and black and white and not a lot of gray. Everybody wants everything to be gray today. Friend, Jesus believed in truth. Jesus believed He was the truth. John 1, 17, God's Word was the truth, and man had to obey that truth to be saved. And as a friend, He taught people the truth. Would somebody be your friend if they lied? If your friend lied to you, what would you think about that person? Well, that's not a good friend. Somebody who goes around lying is not a friend. What about somebody who left something out that was really important that they needed to tell you and they just chose not to? Is that a friend? Well, no. Friends tell truth. Jesus showed His love to the lost by telling them the truth on how to be saved. And then this idea. Jesus showed His friendship with sinners by associating with them for the greatest cause in the world, the salvation of their souls. Mark 12, verse 37, it is said of Jesus again, the common people heard Him gladly. Why did the everyday common people hear Jesus gladly? Because He had healed their sick. He had fed their hungry. He had cast demons out of those who were tormented. Jesus had been with those people day in and day out, and they knew how much the Lord and Savior loved them. Friend, we can't be a friend to sinners if we don't associate with them for the ultimate cause of the salvation of their souls. Well, now let's answer that third question. We've seen... Jesus as a friend of sinners. We've seen how He showed that friendliness. Now let's model that in our life. How can we be friends of sinners today? Well, first and foremost, we can be a friend to someone who's in sin by not having the mindset of the Pharisees. The Pharisees looked down on those people. They didn't want Jesus associating with them. Friend, that's the wrong attitude. The Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. We need to be humble enough to realize we've all been in that place. James chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, we've got to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that He might lift us up. Luke 14, 11 tells us that God will exalt. Those who are humbled will be exalted. Those who think they're exalted will one day be humbled. And so we need this attitude. Luke 18. Verses 9 through 14. Two men go up temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a, a Samaritan. The Pharisee prays thus with himself. God, I thank you. Listen to this now. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. Fornicators, murderers, adulterers. I give, I fast, I do all these things. Aren't you glad I'm on your side? And then the, 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 the Samaritan, he wasn't so much as look up to heaven, but he beat his breast and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, which of those two men went to his house justified? The one who thought he was right and thought he was it or the man who knew he was wrong and knew he needed God. Friend, I don't need to have. If I'm going to be a friend of sinners, I don't need the mindset of the Pharisees. I need to remember, 
I've been there. I know what that feels like. I want to help those people see Jesus. Secondly, to be a friend of sinners, as you think about how important that is for being a Christian, you can be a friend of sinners by taking the gospel to them. Mark 16, 15, this is what Jesus wants us to do. His final request before he ascends back to heaven is this, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Those who are scattered in the book of Acts went everywhere preaching the word. If I'm going to be a friend of sinners, what do I need to do? Friend, don't get me wrong. Do we want to help those who are sick? Do we want to feed those who are hungry? Do we want to do good? Do good to all men. The Bible teaches that. Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10. But that's not the end. That's a means to share the gospel with them and ultimately save their soul. Friend, as we think today about the greatest friend in the world, Jesus Christ, I want to ask you, is He your friend? Are you His friend? Have you done? He's done what's necessary. No greater love than any man has than to lay down his life for his friends. Jesus has laid down His life for you and for me. Have you responded properly? You're my friends if you do whatever I command you. John 15, verses 13 and 14. Do you believe Jesus is the Savior of the world? John chapter 8, verse 24. Have you turned from a life of sin to God in repentance? Acts 3, verse 19. Would you confess Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Matthew 16, verse 17 and 18. And would you to have every sin washed away and to get into Christ be immersed in water? Peter said, Repent and be baptized every one of you for the forgiveness of your sins. Acts 2, verse number 38. And so today, friend, we ask you, are you right with God? Are you ready for eternity? Have you obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ? If not, why not do that today? If we can help you in any way, if you've got Bible questions, something you'd like to study more about, please contact us and we hope you'll join us next time as we study more about Jesus. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of